Now you're ready to start dimensioning and add your final cover page as well. In order to dimension, you go to one of your sheets that has your views on it, and you come up to the ribbon and you choose the Annotate tab. Under Annotate, on the far left is Dimension. You click on Dimension. Now your mouse is doing dimensions. So first, you obviously should be choosing where your dimensions go. Your overall dimension from this side up to here. And then, of course, on features. Now, if this dialog box is coming up, you can simply hit Edit Dimension when created. You deselect that, and this will stop coming up when you're making your dimensions. You place your dimension. Now, this one is another feature, so I would put one here. And I would choose this line here. Notice, if I choose the green dot, I'll run into issues. If you choose a green dot when dimensioning, you are choosing the feature instead of the actual location. And so what I want to do instead, I hit Escape to stop dimensioning. So I go back up to Dimension. And instead of getting the green dot, I make sure I just get the line and I can bring it down. You want to try and snap your dimensions to these given dotted edges. If you see it, it becomes like a, a, a perfect spot at a perfect distance away, 1 8th, 1 16th of an inch, etc. And if this one's too close, we could drag it down a little bit. Um, and so if you drag this down a little bit, for some reason it's double clicking on it for me right now. Uh, and so I'll hit escape and drag it down a little bit and you can get it to a better spot. Then we can do our height dimensions. Notice here's a good feature. It's also between adjacent views. Here's another feature. And even though this is three units tall, if we do our counting, we only need one, two dimensions. Finally, our depth dimensions. Here's an excellent feature. And then this is on the feature and between adjacent views. So I'll put this one here. Now this page has been fully dimensioned. If I want to stop dimensioning and do something else, I need to right click and hit OK or cancel, or I need to hit escape. Then we can go to our blue part and we can put dimensions there as well. I want to show you something that happens if you choose the wrong locations. So if I choose this bottom point and this bottom point here and I go up, what I want you to notice is that the extension lines don't have a gap. And that's because when I chose this bottom point, it's literally extending from there. And so you want to be careful when you're choosing during dimension locations to make sure that you're either choosing the top of it or you're choosing the line feature itself to go up. Notice I can choose edge to edge, or I could just choose a single feature, or I can choose edge to edge. It depends on how you want to do it for each feature, but make sure you do them correctly. Make sure you follow all your dimension guidelines and your feed feedback from your teacher. Finally, if I want to add my cover page, I want to stop dimensioning by hitting right click OK. And then over here, I'm going to add one more new sheet. And I hit new sheet, and my name is still the same, my class period is still the same, and it's still the Puzzle Cube project, of course. This page is going to come in as page four. I'm going to rename it cover. I'm going to move it to the top. So I can simply drag it up to the top. And now it will be, you'll notice, sheet one of four. It's going to end up being sheet one of six, of course, but I'm not showing you the entire packet today. Finally, I right click and I do edit sheet. And I want to make my cover page size B, which is 11 by 17. This will make a larger page because we're going to put two larger views on it. I'm going to do place views and I'm going to do a view of my assembly. And I'm going to do that one to one, but I want an isometric view of that, of course. And so I'll place that here and I want to make sure it's shaded and it already is. So I hit OK. And I want to do a one to one view of my presentation file as well. And you should have seen in the presentation file how you can edit the view of that if it's not coming in correctly. And here we are. Now I put on balloons and parts list. Under the annotate tab, I have balloons. I can simply click on each part. I click and then I hit OK and it's drawing it from that file. And then I click again and I come out horizontal and then right click continue. Click on the part, come out at an angle, go horizontal, click again, right click continue. So it's a click, 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 right click continue. Uh, finally, you would balloon one of each of these in this view. We can do a parts list. So we do a parts list. It says, what view do you want to do a parts list of? I'm going to choose my assembly. I hit OK. And then I drop my parts list in here. And you can go in and you can you can edit these things. But one way, one thing you might notice is you want to get rid of this description column. So I highlight the word description. You see where it comes up with that little clover symbol. I right click. I'm going to do edit parts list. Not the style, but the list. And then I can choose columns over here. So do column chooser. And I get rid of description.